Hello world, in Japan's former capital city, Kyoto, these are the homes that, for a time, most lived in, Kyomachiyas. What does the word Kyomachiya mean? It's a blend of Kyoto and Machiya, Kyoto the city, and Machiya meaning townhouse. There are actually a ton of different types of dwellings that fall under the Kyomachiya categorization, but in general, they have to be built before the 1950s because of a building standards law that came into place at that time, and the wooden homes need to be put together without nails. So the question I feel this video needs to answer is what's so special about Kyomachiyas and why live in an old Japanese townhouse? Because I mean, if you're like me, you might have heard that old Japanese homes are poorly built with no insulation. You can hear your neighbors, they're cold in the winter, and they're tough to maintain. And what about earthquakes? Isn't there a reason for that building standards law? And isn't it a good thing that these old places are getting replaced by modern buildings? To answer those questions, I visited four different families, as well as stayed in a guest house, and even saw a vacant traditional kyomachiya. So this is our house. Yeah, I'm Richard. I'm Masami. <laughs> <laughs> and while they lived many years overseas, from Africa to the Philippines, they are Canadian and Japanese. Sorry, I'm Bryn, and I'm originally from Canada. And uh, as soon as I saw the photos online, I just thought, yeah, this looks absolutely perfect. My name is Cecilia Ramirez, and I'm from Mexico for a period of maybe two years. She searched and finally found the Kyomachia that she wanted to renovate. She'll also be building everything with uh, the use of natural materials. I'm Vincent, and uh, I'm French. Hi, I'm Ayu. <clears throat> I'm Indonesian. We wanted to to live the Kyoto experience and to be in a traditional house, but at the same time we wanted uh, something quite comfortable because we are living with two kids of three and six years old. The fact that it's a, it's a beautifully made wood house, I think was one of the key attractions. So these were the, these are the Yoshidos. It's a traditional sliding partition door. The idea behind that was, particularly in the hot summers, it lets um, wind blow throughout the house while giving each of the rooms uh, privacy. These are actually the flowers from the, the thousand yen note, <laughs> and, uh, which, is a, which is a trademark of the, of the maker. But we also asked him to make these. This is a heron, mm -hmm. and this, uh, this is actually my family crest. <laughs> For this week, we keep it uh, very minimalist. We keep it in the traditional Japanese bedroom sense, so we just have the, the tatami mats. We, store the futons every day in the cupboard. Stuffed in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So probably not done the traditional Japanese way. <laughs> but, uh, uh, that, that seems about right. <laughs> yep, yep. What we really like about the upstairs here is the height of the ceilings. So you can see these are the original original beams from the, from the house. This is a supposed to be my pottery oh, yeah. <laughs> studio, but because of tatami, it's kind of a bit difficult right now. This we can move around. See? Then I can extend this one to over there. So something dirty things I can drop to the front. So this is the tsuboni, tsuboni wa. Traditionally in a machiya, this would be in the center of the house. You have a long house and it would be in the center. And the reason they had them, they have an open area and would actually let light into the, into the house. Uh, this one is actually one of my bonsai. <laughs> so this comes from my efforts with the bonsai group. I cannot pray. <laughs> this one was belonged to my grandmother, who was from Kyoto originally. And then probably this is about 100 years old. The modern homes. They're, they're beautiful, they're functional, um, but uh, they don't really reflect the culture of the people who live in them, whereas Machia, I think, really reflects the, the culture. Yeah, so there's three Machia here. The guys beside me is a guest house, and then it's a family next door. And then there are some businesses across the street and some families as well. Just looking at it, it feels like a modern, yep. what you'd find in any Japanese home. Exactly. Well, every once in a while, I kind of go, oh yeah, that's right, there's a whole world up there. Yeah, that's really cool, I like that. 
So the stairs are pretty steep. They're steep, but I, I don't think they're, that's really unusual for much. Mm -hmm. you know? And this is the laundry. The temple, uh, the, they're really nice. And this belongs to the temple as well. And then this is my daughter's room, and it's probably not that clean. Yeah. This is just looking down at the kitchen from, from upstairs. natural beauty of much yeah, I absolutely love. The alternates in Kyoto for me are just so, so unappealing. They're just really, really horrible kind of cookie cutter homes that kind of emulate Western style in a way. And they're just absolutely devoid of soul. I know what he's talking about, my house. Yep, bought it three years ago and it's completely cookie cutter. And nope, I wouldn't describe it as beautiful. Although, I do find it very practical for my family's needs. So this is our bathroom. And yeah, as you know, we have Japanese toilet, you know. Please come here. This is uh, my favorite place. You know, it's the bath time. And in the, time, in, the, in the same time, you can see the beautiful garden. And as we love to cook, uh, it's uh, important for us also to have a big kitchen. So we decided to put the kids upstairs. Uh, <laughs> this looks really, really fun place. We enjoy the fact of being just near the river. Let's go to Kamogawa! Yeah. 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 This is the neighbor's wall. So oh, that's the neighbor's wall? <laughs> yeah, so this is the back of the wall, of uh, earth and wall. Okay. And here, of course, it needs to be repaired. Okay, and so when you renovate it, do you keep it the same style? Like yes. Like walls? Yes. The walls are composed of a straw and mud mixture, both which used to come from rice fields. That's bamboo, yes. It's the base to, for putting the, the first layer of soil. So yeah. the first three layers are quite rough, and then the last layers will be the finish. And right. this is what I really like about these old places. You can see the history. Since Cecilia was so passionate about Kyomachias, I asked what she most liked about them. Everything, the materials, how it's built, the, also the part of the conservation, because it's not just conservation of architecture, but it's also conservation of the urbanism of Kyoto, and wood structures, just everything. Okay, so let's have a rundown of a basic kyomachiya. First off, they're often called unagi no neroko, or eel beds. There are two popular theories as to how the name came about. One theory states that as taxes were determined by the width of the building's entrance, the portion of the building that faced the street became narrower and the building's length increased. Another theory posits that land plots were divided up into smaller units to bring in as many merchants as possible to help make the city thrive. So the front part is called Mise no Ma, our shop space. It's where a craftsman might put together kimonos, like in Cecilia's place, or sell goods, like at her neighbor's place. A really friendly guy, by the way. So they often had dual purposes, long before live-work condos were all the rage. Along the whole side of the building would be the Tori Niwa, which is an earthen floor corridor. This is also where the Okudo-san, the kitchen, was located. And this is what the traditional cooking equipment looked like. Because it was earthen floors, footwear would be worn in this area. If you looked up, you'd notice a double-height ceiling called the Hibukuro. This space acted both as a chimney for the smoke from cooking and as a skylight. Behind the shop space, there would be the kyoshitsubu, or the living space. That's where you could host guests, or simply eat your meals. At the end of the house would be the engawa. This is the wooden veranda, and to me it's very iconically Japanese. It'll feature a double set of sliding doors. Based on the weather and the desired amount of wind or light you wanted, you could open and close them to transform the room. There's even these cute little ones above. 
and Engawa will have a little courtyard garden called Tsuboniwa. Many kyomachiya are right on the street, so gardens out front were rare. So in the back, this is where you could have some greenery and let some light in. In quite a few of these house designs I've seen, this is also where you'd have your bath. If you go up the stairs to the second floor, you might notice a hakokaidan, which literally means box stairs. With the lack of space, it's a practical way of putting in extra storage. At the top is generally where sleeping quarters would be. Tatami rooms with closets where you could store your futons, which you'd put out at night to sleep in. While a new kyomachiya can be built from scratch, due to time, money, and skill restraints, it is rarely done. As a result, their numbers are decreasing at a worrying rate. Roughly two or three kyomachiya is being demolished each day. With the current stock of around 40,000, that means by 2050, there will be very few left. So that's one of a very big uh, kind of mission that we wanted to accomplish to preserve as much as we can. Increasingly, people are coming together to keep these historical buildings, as well as being creative with the spaces. For example, the four families I visited purchased or rented their homes through Hachisei, ensuring they're preserved. Other uses for kyomachiya include guest houses, shops, and restaurants, just to name a few. Hachisei is a 64 years old um, real estate agency mainly deal with kyomachiya. We help foreign customers to buy their own house or a future investment. And also we help, um, we have monthly rental. A good thing is that while it's quite difficult to get a kyomachiya built from scratch, renovating an existing one is much simpler, especially if you're not changing the structure. And I find that sometimes the constraints can be a creative boon where people find such fascinating ways of designing around and living within the limitations given. These are a group of kyomachiya that have been renovated. There are three houses in this complex and they all have their own unique styling. As traditional as kyomachiyas may seem, they have gone through generations of change, so you shouldn't feel that you can't switch up some elements. While the work is often done by local craftsmen and use local materials, the results can widely vary. This tatami room was transformed into a meditation slash yoga room with the walls covered in washi, or Japanese paper. Here you can see the original wooden beams up top and some added windows below along the stairway. An example of a choice you can make is whether to go with hardwood floors or tatami mats. This one actually has both in the same room. And sleeping on the floor, you can do that at certain places, but western style beds can also be had. One thing I've seen with all places is that they choose to have modern kitchens and bathroom facilities. To get an idea of renovations that can be done, let's start off by taking a look at Richard and Masami's house. Another addition that we made is a fitted kitchen. An oven, grill, a hidden dishwasher, we have these blinds which you can bring down if you want to, if you really want to cover the kitchen. <laughs> so th this side of the uh, machia is really fun, actually the design phase. What you want, how you want things hidden, what you want highlighted and so on. So this was really fun. So this actually turns out to be quite a, quite a nice place just to sit, read a book. I've always had a dream to build, a, build my own sports bar in my house, so I one of the first projects I did. And uh, so here we have it, at to match wood. The uh, contractor who built the house helped me find uh, the natural edge, uh, solid piece for the, for the top. So we, the first upgrade we requested before moving in was a heated floor. So I think uh, that I would fully recommend. Speaking of temperature control, this seems like a good time to address common concerns people have about living in a kyomachia. We were a little bit afraid before because we were afraid to be mm. like so cold in the winter and so yeah. hot in the summer. Everybody told to me not to not to choose a, a machine because, because it's too cold and it's yeah. too difficult to live in. But we are in March now, so the winter is uh, <laughs> almost over, and we and we survived. <laughs> the construction, you know, uh, it's really floor. yeah, the heat on floor. It's really warm mm. in the winter, and then there's one aircon here and one aircon upstairs, and 
they are heavily used. Just a quick note, renovated kyomachiyas are often upgraded with both insulation as well as heating and cooling equipment such as double pane windows, heated floors, and aircon units. Usually, machiyas are quite dark. A new window will be here on these walls. There are a couple reasons as to why machiyas on the ground level are dark. One is that they are long and narrow townhouses, which means unless they're on a corner lot, there is no windows on the side walls. The second is that the front windows are usually covered with koshi, which means lattice. They are supposed to still let in light, but it's not the same amount that you'd get from a completely clear window. In Cecilia's case, there is no longer a building on the other side of the wall, so she can put a window in as the latest building codes ensure a new house can never be put right up against it again. And talking about building codes, how would a kyomachiya hold up in an earthquake? The building methods used are the same ones that temples use, which is placing wooden posts on rocks that can slide in the event of an earthquake. Instead of trying to make the structure stay put, it instead focuses on letting it shift. Despite numerous earthquakes, there are temples that have lasted hundreds of years. That being said, due to geography, the city of Kyoto hasn't historically received earthquakes as large as other parts of Japan. I've read some recent small-scale studies showing that the earthquake resistance of Kyomachias are greater than previously thought. But hey, I'm no engineer or architect. So how do you get yourself into a Kyomachia of your own? If you are purchasing with, with cash, then there are basically no uh, problem, even as a foreigner. That's right. If you have the cash, it doesn't matter who you are, you can buy. But if you don't, there are loans available, although you'd most likely need to be a permanent resident to go this route. My initial thoughts were to be unaffordable, but uh, actually price-wise, it was also very surprising how, how affordable they were compared to property in, say, Vancouver. <laughs> so. Actually, that's not too surprising. The Vancouver housing market is terribly unaffordable. But I get his point. For a historical building in a world-class city, it's not as costly as you would think. In Kyoto, with Kyomachiyas, there are many subsidies. For example, if you're renovating to Chikabe, earth walls, you get some so subsidy to refurbish them. Also, structural, you can get help from Kyoto City. Now, not everyone can buy one or wants to buy one, but you can certainly temporarily stay in one, whether it's as a tourist for a night or two in a guest house, or perhaps as a visiting professor who needs a fully furnished monthly rental. What I enjoyed most about making this video was seeing how people were connecting to the culture of Kyoto through not only the buildings, but the craftsmen they met, the traditional items they purchased from them, and the locals they joined with to preserve long-standing traditions. The one activity I got involved with actually through a group in a local yakitori restaurant was uh, the omikoshi. It's very heavy. <laughs> each, each shrine is two tons and then you carry it on two poles. So now when I walk around the community, they recognize you and they, they, they thank you for being involved with carrying this thing. It's heavy. <laughs> so. I cut so many interesting things out of the video, like this little guy on the roof, Shoki-san, that protects the house from demons. Special thanks to Hachisei for sponsoring the video. They'll help get you into a kyomachiya, whether it's buying one or only staying a night. This is actually one of those special occurrences where having a sponsor made the video much, much better, as I got access to so many different kyomachiyas, as well as to the kind people who let me into their homes. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. What are traditional houses like where you're from?